this week's episode, we've got a session packed with tips and tricks for Windows users who are moving to Mac OS. So from the desktop to accessories, I'm going to tell you everything that you're going to need to know in order to move across smoothly and seamlessly. On top of that, we've got fully featured applications, including Apple's own version of Microsoft Office, which is super simple to use so you can create slick presentations, spreadsheets and amazing documents all for free. On top of that, we've also got media creation tools, including photo editing tools, video creation tools, and you can even create your own music. So stay tuned, and I guarantee this week you will learn something new. Greetings fellow YouTubers, firstly a very Merry Christmas to all of you. I hope that you had a nice time and that Santa was good to you. Welcome back. On this week's episode, I'm going to take a look at the Mac OS operating system from Apple. Um, I've been using Mac for a number of years and I can't tell you the number of comments that I get from folks out there that go, you're a Microsoft guy that uses Mac OS. What's the deal? Well, if you're a Windows user and you're moving across to Mac, then that move can be just a little bit daunting. So I thought I would come up with a session of tips and tricks to help make that transition a little bit smoother. So in this session, we're gonna look at some of the cool features, we're gonna look at accessories, and some of the cool applications that come with the operating system for free. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button up there, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And if you've got comments and questions about this or any of my other sessions, then of course, get them down below. I love your feedback. So without any further ado, let's jump in and have a look at this week's demo and make sure that you stay to the end because there's some really good tips in this session. All right, enjoy. Actually, I do think that Windows 11 is looking like the Mac every day. Um, uh, we have the dock at the bottom of the screen. So rather than the start menu or the start bar, you can see that we have the dock and you can lift icons on or off. On the right hand side here, you can see I've got lots of shortcuts to documents and you can actually stack these up. So rather than having a desktop full of documents, you can have them in stacks and you can see that you can also arrange them by date and various orders. So really super easy to find your way around and you can just collapse them back down. Of course, just like Windows, you can customize the desktop as well. I love this though, the fact that if you've got a, a, an iPad or a iPhone, then you can take pictures, you can um, transfer files, and you can even remotely access the other device's camera, which is super cool, by the way. Um, other things that we've got here, you can see that if I open up PowerPoint, um, here is my PowerPoint presentation. One thing that I found a little bit annoying, well, it's not annoying, it's just a little bit different, is that when you close down an application here, <clears throat> you can, of course, you've got the taskbar in Windows. Well, here in the Mac, you've got the force quit option here. So I can force quit close this application. So if there was a problem, if it's something crashed, then that would be cool. Now, the one thing that you'll notice is when I open up an application and just close it down, there's a little dot below the icon. And this tells me that the application is actually not closed. It's still open. So you need to go up there and you need to shut that down. That's a little bit annoying. Okay, so what else have we got? Well, um, the next thing then is if I click on the little Apple icon there, and I'm gonna go into my settings. So of course, this is my settings that control all of my different settings on my machine. And there's some very cool things here, by the way. Um, so you can also create additional users and groups, just like you can on Windows devices. Some of the accessories actually are really good, uh, very, very useful. And there is one particular one that I absolutely love, accessibility. Um, you've got 
pointer control. Now, a, a Mac OS Ventura, um, you can move the pointer with your head. So check this out. I am now moving this with my head. How cool is that? So if you've got a kind of a severe disability or you just want to try it yourself, you can move your mouse pointer with your eyes. It's kind of very science fiction-y actually. Um, so super simple. Everything's well arranged. Um, uh, you've got all your network settings, your Bluetooth settings. If you're familiar with an iPad and an iPhone, many of these will be the same. And of course, one of the big benefits that you get free updates and you also get free upgrades of the operating system as well which is super uh, helpful, by the way. Um, now, one thing that you'll notice about the desktop is it's super clean. You can, of course, customize every single aspect of the operating system, um, which, you know, is definitely something that you would probably want to do. Um, for file management, we don't have file manager, of course. We have the finder and you can have multiple windows open. The one disappointing thing that I found here that there was no cut uh, option here so you can only copy I found that a little bit annoying but of course you've also got things like um, well we don't use control so control x for cut copy and paste x c and v you can use the command key so all the keys that you know will be very very familiar and here in finder you can sort your data in any way that you want so by date by file size and so on uh, you can copy files you can have multiple windows open as well and you can see the one thing you don't have by the way is the c and d drives to clutter things up but you can forward things you can send things to your iphone or to your contacts um, so it, it's super flexible. You can right click and just print a document as well, which is super nice. And you've also got access to your cloud drive, of course, which means so you open one thing uh, on one uh, desktop and you make some changes and you can then open it again on your iPhone, which is really nice. You'll notice that the uh, the close, minimize and maximize buttons, by the way, are on the left hand side rather than the right hand side. OK, so what about the different pieces of software that come on the Mac? Well, I got to tell you, there's an absolute mass amount of stuff. So typically in Windows, uh, you know, you get like a notepad and you get like a various, you know, you get like a version of WordPad that's really, really super basic. But here on the Mac, you get some great pieces of software. So Pages, for example, is a fully functional word processing package. Um, and I, I got to be honest, it's as good as Microsoft Word. Maybe not with all the bells and whistles, but it's, it's still pretty darn good. You've got a version of a spreadsheet called Numbers. And of course, you've also got a PowerPoint clone as well. But it's uh, here that you can see the real simplicity of the application. So I'm just going to open up a document. So let's just have a quick look at this. And you can see that here we are in Pages. So Pages, very, very similar to Microsoft Word. You can move text around. You can format it. Uh, the nice thing is you can see that on the, you, not only, by the way, do you have the right-hand mouse menu, but you can also see that you've got a nice easy menu. It's a context menu uh, on the right-hand side there. So depending on what you're doing, the menu will actually change accordingly. So you can change things like fonts, you can change colors and sizes, and you can insert pictures and various graphics. You can change font colors and all kinds of things in here and uh, you'll notice it's fully compatible with Microsoft Word. One of the things I absolutely love by the way is you can export it to lots of different types of documents as well. So you, not just PDF, but you can export it to an EPUB um, document. So if you want, if you're writing your own book or something like that, that's absolutely fantastic. Of course, other things like you can add graphs, charts, pictures, you can have videos in. And you, you've also got uh, clever technology, AI driven technology like speech to text. So just like that, you just like what you have uh, in traditional Microsoft Word. So absolutely superb. So that's pages. 
Um, the other thing that we've got, which I really like, um, is the presentation software. Um, and you can see that this, uh, again, super simplistic as well. It's got a very, very similar or very familiar a PowerPoint feel to it. This is Keynote. Again, it comes complete with a whole bunch of different templates, which some of them are really nice, actually. And again, <clears throat> some applications you might require kind of, um, you know, to pay premium fees here, but uh, in this case, you don't. So uh, again, just like PowerPoint, you've got different types of slides. So depending on the type of presentation that you're producing, I guarantee that you'll find something. Of course, you can change color schemes, you can change styles, you can change fonts. And as I said, there's a whole bunch of kind of preset slides uh, that you can use as well. So if you're looking for a kind of a really professional look, then I guarantee there's going to be something there for you as well. Um, now, what again, nice thing about this is you can also export it out in different formats. Um, so which is really cool. And you can see there's the right hand mouse button there as well. So again, depending on what you're doing, it's context sensitive. So it will change accordingly. So you can see it's making some slide recommendations, some styles. So yeah, I think this kind of looks cool. So I can click onto this and that's really nice. You know, so the fact, and you can, of course, you can change these pictures as well. Um, so uh, that's the presentation uh, piece of software. That's called Keynote. And again, absolutely free. Don't need to pay any additional licenses and you get exactly the same kind of functionality that you would with the likes of PowerPoint as well. Um, so I'm just going to close that down. I'll just discard the changes there. So going back to the applications, what else have we got? Well, of course, no uh, office presentation suite would be complete without a spreadsheet. And uh, Apple has one, it's called Numbers. Um, and again, very familiar. I can just, there are a whole bunch of different templates that you can use. I'm just opening up a very basic one here. And you can see it's a little less cluttered than, for example, Microsoft and some of the other uh, applications out there. But it's got all the same functionality. You can see I've got a, a very simple formula here. And it's got some very sophisticated formulas as well. Um, again, you can uh, add things like nice charts in. You've got 3D charts, 2D charts, whatever you want. You can export the data in or out. I find it uh, very, very easy to use. And again, it's fully compatible with Microsoft Office. Now, the one big difference that you'll notice between Microsoft and Apple is that with Microsoft, you get kind of just pretty lame applications, kind of cut down things. But here in Apple Mac OS, you get fully featured applications. So you can create videos with iMovie, you've got audio creation tools, audio editing tools, and you've got this one as well, which is GarageBand. And this is probably one of the most famous ones. So if you're a musician and you've got your own little studio, then you can hook up your equipment, you can hook up microphones, um, instruments, keyboards, all kinds of stuff, and you can mix it accordingly. Um, absolutely superb, this one, by the way. So as well as a pretty robust set of applications, we've also got some great accessories as well. And these include, uh, we've got chess, of course. We've also got terminal. So if you're a bit of a command line junkie, you can use that. Uh, and which is kind of really nice. So if you know Linux, then this is the one for you. You've got things like uh, keychain access for managing all your passwords. So literally everything is in here that you're gonna need in order to maintain it. One really useful tool that I love is Automator, by the way. This is an absolutely fantastic tool. Um, so if you're familiar with the likes of PowerShell or actually more Power Automate in Microsoft 365, this is great because you can literally go in here and you can create uh, automations for pretty much anything. So for regular command line stuff from uh, to applications to what to do if an attachment comes in, there are literally hundreds of automations and I'm just starting to get to grips with this. So this is maybe something I might do 
uh, in a session in the not too distant future. So this is really cool, actually. So this is called Automator. Definitely check it out. Um, and you can uh, export that. Now, uh, of course, if you're a Microsoft E, then you might ask, well, you know, what about things like the file system, Andy? Can I run NTFS on this? Well, the thing about NTFS, NTFS is a Windows-based uh, file system. And although it doesn't come native with the o OS, you can actually go out and purchase it as a utility. It's very low cost. Um, okay, so what else? Well, what about configuring things like Wi-Fi and printers and things like that? Well, unlike Microsoft that requires a lot of different screens, um, there's an awful uh, lot of quick shortcuts here. So, for example, I can go up to the icon at the top of the screen here, and you can see here, really, this is where we have our kind of shortcut areas. So if you've got things like uh, Wi-Fi, networking, you would literally just go into here. Of course, you can also go in through the various settings uh, pages as well that I showed you earlier. But this is nice. You can see that everything is in one place. So you can click onto any of these items uh, to configure them. And on top of that, of course, you've also got keyboard shortcuts as well, which is super nice and really simple to use. Um, so again, you saw NTFS for Mac was loaded there as well. Definitely go out and purchase that, by the way. If you're a Windows user, you'll definitely find it useful. Now, on the subject of finding stuff, how do I find stuff, Andy? Well, you can hold down the command key and the space bar or click on Spotlight Search and you can literally search for anything. So we were talking about PowerShell a moment ago. So you can see it doesn't just search for items that is local to your own machine or your own network, but it will also uh, help you find items on the web as well. So yes, there is a version of PowerShell that you can download and install for the Mac. So you can just go here um, to the uh, Microsoft site and download that. Super simple. Now, one major difference and huge benefit for me uh, when installing applications, you know, in Microsoft, when you download an application and you go through the setup and you get all of those different screens and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Well, I'm just downloading VLC player here. So I'm just going to download that and just check out how easy it is to install and remove an application. So um, to install an application, all you do is you have this file. It's got a DMG extension. So I just simply double click this file and it will then say, hey, do you want to install it? Um, and I go, yep, yeah, that's absolutely fine. I do. And all you do is literally drag it and drop it and the application will then record. So there's no setup screens, no click, 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 no lot time consuming sequence and once it's installed that's it um, it's then available through the various menus so I can simply go back into my applications there and if I just scroll along there it is there's VLC and of course I can create a shortcut by just simply dragging it and dropping it onto the dock and if you want to remove it just simply remove it um, and in terms of uninstalling the application, well, it couldn't have been even simpler. So we don't need to go to settings anymore. You don't need to go into any complex removal procedures. You simply go into the applications in Finder. So just go into Finder, open up applications, scroll down, find the application and literally drag it and drop it into your waste paper bin. And that's it. Isn't that simple? And there you have it. My little tour of Mac OS for Windows users and admins. I hope you found that useful, guys. So there you have it. What's that? About 20 minutes? I really hope you enjoyed that and just gives you a nice gentle introduction to the Mac if you were a Windows user. Hey, listen, I love your questions and comments and feedback. Maybe there was something that I missed. And if you're an experienced user, let them know, put it down there and make sure everybody knows your tips and tricks as well. That's what this is about. It's all about community. All right. 
Hey, listen, guys, thanks so much. And I want to wish you all a very, very happy new year when it comes. And thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Andy Malone. You stay safe, guys. Cheers. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.